And let's check out this area. The names carved in stone are no longer legible. Hmm. Its branches are stretching over the graves. How eerie. Oh, yes, William's grave is back here, so let's take a look. One of the crypts of our family. I don't even know who's buried in it. Hmm. I guess we won't find out now. And there it is. William will rest in this cold grave forever. I'll find out the whole truth, even if I go through hell for it. Oh, this takes place in 1981. I was trying to remember when this took place. So, yeah. I think that just gives us another close-up, and okay. The tomb of Jeremy Gordon. And not much else. We actually want to have one more chat with the gravekeeper. Takes a while because you can't double just double click over there. Got to wait for it to pan. Is that usually how you dig a grave with a pickaxe? Did I disturb you? Not for long, I've got a lot of work to do. Has Father Frederick returned yet? No, he hasn't. It's a long journey from Winshire. He won't be back until tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'd like. You'd like to go inside the church, but I already told you about that. Now go. I have to finish this before dusk. And that's the sequence trigger we needed. It's seven o'clock. I should return to the main gate. Oh, yeah, you if said you... is true to his word, his man will be waiting there for me. You said you'd be there at seven on the dot, and that you have to walk back. You must be Dr. Herman's man, is that right? I'm not Herman's man. I just work for him from time to time. You're Samuel Gordon, aren't you? I've got something to deliver. Yes, please give it to me. Yeah, why not? I don't care who you are anyway. I was supposed to give this package to whoever came to this gate at seven. That's when my job is over. Take it so I can go. Hold on a minute. Are you Mark? Yeah, that's me. Why? Harry said you had worked in our garden. A couple of times. So what? I'd like to ask you about William Gordon. What can you tell me about him? Hmm. Nothing. I barely knew him. I just worked in the garden. I'm in a hurry. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. Good. See you around. Bye. I hope I'll find what I'm looking for. All right, well, let's get in here. And see what we can find. There's only a watch and a few trinkets in it. Hmm. I'll open it. William made a remark of some kind here. Okay, so there's a little piece of paper in there. To my forgetful head, the path to the key begins in the library. 
on my work table, hidden away under the blue curtain of unwritten words. Interesting. We see a picture of the globe there, so uh, that might be something we'll want to see about. So let's go back to the library. Oh, there's something. Hello. The window of my room. All right. So let's check it out. Said so something about under a blue sea of unwritten words. Well, if we look at the inkwell now, there's a button under the inkwell. Uh -huh. I'll try to press it. It's in time. Interesting. It's neat. There's a box of some sort. I'll take it. Hmm. And looks like there's some drinks in there, too. There is nothing of interest there anymore. Is he had a liquor habit he wanted to keep secret? There is nothing of... Okay, so we can still click on it again, so let's keep note of that, I guess. Oh yeah, we want to exit out this way, make it take a really roundabout way of uh, going about this. If we look at what we were given, we can use it here. Planets. Alright, and uh, oh, almost dropped something. So this is basically where your uh, astronomy skills need to come into play. You need to put the right planets in the right places. So let us begin here. I don't even know which planet is called which, but I just I do know the solution to this. There. Red planet goes there. This one goes there. Earth goes here. The third rock from the sun, of course. I only know because of the name of the show. It's a good show. I missed that show. So you go there, and you go there. And the key. That's it. That must be William's key. All right, we can finally go up into the tower. Something we've been trying to do for like seven episodes now, something like that. Yikes. All right. So we can investigate and see what was going on up there. of truth has come upon us. The door can't be opened. I left William's key on the other side of the door. The lock must have gotten stuck. Oh, you idiot. Well, okay then. At least we could just still take a look around here. The black rook is missing. Okay. The lid is locked. 
The lid won't move. Everything is just locked up. Not a great start here. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay. Yeah, I can't move anything right now. As though I've heard that melody somewhere before. Okay, then. What else do we have? Oh, I have that rook that was missing. Lots of scrolls and papers, but none with William's writing. He must have been recording the important notes somewhere. Hmm. See anything else we can click on here? <laughs> And that's it. Out the drawer. Uh. Hmm. This title makes no sense. I'll have a closer look. All right. It's look like fingers in there, but I doubt that's actually what that is. Let's see, Rhodian Curly Cut, okay. Uh, so let's take a closer look at some of these things we got. Oh, the Rook turns into a knife. Interesting, isn't there? I thought, yeah, there is kind of another game. I was thinking of uh, Phantasmagoria. It reminds me of that statue that turns into a knife. It must be a letter opener. There's a small key inside the book. Interesting. The pages have been cropped so as to hide it. I'll take it. Anything else? No? Alright. Now, there's something here you can easily miss. Right click. A book has been glued to the bottom side of the drawer. The Aha. diary of William Gordon. William's diary. Excellent. Hopefully I'll finally learn what happened that night. March 21st. I'm old. I'm old. I know my time is drawing in, and that is why I want to put some sense into my life before I leave this world. I have contributed my last years to looking for the truth about my family and the blood that runs in my veins. Maybe it is also because of the guilt that I bear in my heart for the fate of my dear James. The fate that I didn't have the courage to change. After all the years spent with the old journals, I know at last what the goal of my search is. I must not lose time. March 23rd. In the chronicle of the manor and the old records in the library, I have learned things that were forgotten and much that is new. I learned that James is not the only one to have lost full control of his mind. Throughout the centuries, several of my blood ancestors have suffered from the same affliction that now curses James. It seems as though it is all somehow correlated, has a perverse purpose of some kind. I traced the family line and learned that every one of those poor souls had been born in the same week repeating with the period of two centuries. Is the madness supposed to be punishment of some sort? A punishment for deeds so horrible that we have not been pardoned, even after 700 years? I am terrified by this idea. It follows me now, day and night. April 5th. I feel something is not right with me. I am weaker from day to day. My age has caught up with me at last. As the Chronicle foretells, the way to revealing the truth is through five symbolic keys. I don't exactly know what their purpose is, but if they can lead me to the truth, I must obtain them. I have decided to pursue first the ones that have been carried over time far from my manor. 
Centuries ago, the keys were given to different men of our family for safekeeping, so that they couldn't be used together. Luckily, I still have my own with me, and obtaining James's keys should not be difficult. If only I had known before what I know today, I would not have given it to him. The next one must be in the hands of Marcus himself, according to the records. The fourth one was given to Durgham Gordon, the original owner of the remote manor in Wales. I must set off for Wales soon, that is certain. I still do not know where the fifth key is. Its origin eludes me in the many years of the past. When I obtain the other ones, I must find this last one too. April 15th. I have returned from Wales. My searching was futile. It was not easy to get into the family tomb. Unfortunately, I failed to reveal the next fragment of truth and returned home empty-handed. Not all hope is lost, however. I will focus on the keys that James and Marcus possess. It should not be hard to obtain them. April 21st. I cannot change what has happened in the past of my ancestors, but I hope I can influence the events of the future. The curse that has plagued our family must be of dateless origin. It must stretch into times as distant as those of Marcus and Mordred, the first Gordons. I have decided to start looking for answers at the place where the body of Marcus rests. I know that the tomb is concealed in the dark underground of the parish. Its entrance has long been lost in forgetfulness. No one knows where to begin to look for it. I will set off for the vicarage tonight, April 26th. Whatever it is that is buried underneath Warm Hill, it is not easily within reach. It took me several days before I discovered an extraordinary pedestal with numerous tiny and meticulously shaped stones in the belfry. The whole pedestal is a complex mechanical lock. Surely it will open the way to the church's underground for me. I tried to change the positions of the opposite stones, but it was beyond my will to fully concentrate. I was too tired to attempt to set up the mechanism properly. Before I left for home, I made a drawing of the whole mechanism and returned the stones to their original configuration. Tomorrow I will go to Warm Hill as early as possible. April 27th. Luck was on my side today. I opened the way leading to the tomb of Marcus. Surely, I'm the first one in centuries to have succeeded in doing so. How great was my surprise when I descended into the tomb. There was not a trace of Marcus's grave. Nothing. His body must be hidden somewhere. I hope that the answer lies in the four books surrounding the center of the tomb. Shall wisdom be your way? writes an old text carved in stone. Even after his death, wisdom protects Marcus as it has in his life. I am almost positive that the first answer is map. Despite the darkness, I tried to write down the text from the books, but it was easier to memorize it. I also found an extraordinary, in all probability, a ceremonial object in the shape of a perfect sphere. When I touched it, it was as though whole long centuries breathed on me. An odd feeling. May 7th. I am afraid of this night. I have not slept for two days now, and I hear voices. Yes, human voices. There are dozens of them. Their whispering is melting my ears into a sea of horrifying noise. What's happening with me? Am I mad too? No, I repudiate that. Now that I am so close to the truth. That is a lot of information to take in. There was... Yeah, William was going through quite the ordeal. But the main thing we need to remember is that there are five keys to find to actually get to the heart of the manor. But what lies there, that's the question. But yeah, there's some clues and hints in there for future puzzles. So we will keep that on hand. Hmm. Alright, so we got ourselves another key here. And 
And there's that sphere that he was writing about. Hmm. It's cold to the touch. Getting Amnesia the Dark Descent vibes here. Anyway, uh, we need to get out now. So let's just pry our way out. I'll try to push the latch open. Success! I don't think I can find anything more in here. I'm feeling so strange. My head. Oh no. And he gets back up again because, uh, graphics. Sir, you're awake at last. We were starting to worry that something might have happened to you. What happened to you, Samuel? I don't know. All of a sudden, my head started to ache vigorously. I cannot remember anything after that. How did I make it to my room? Base found you lying unconscious in the attic. Yes, I was going to tidy up there when I saw you lying on the floor. I hurried to get Sir Robert, and then we carried you to your bed so that you could have a rest. I told you, Samuel, that you should take a rest after such a long journey. Perhaps you are right. I have no idea what happened. I vaguely remember having a strange dream, but I cannot figure out what it means. Important thing is that you're all right. Yes, that's true. It would be best for you to sleep for a while. This time, I will follow your advice, Robert. Good. We shall leave you alone then. If it gets worse, come see me. Thank you. Hopefully I will be all right now. Come, Bates. We shall leave Samuel to his rest. Yes, sir. Robert is right. I should take a rest. Tomorrow, I'll find out more than today. And thus we arrive finally to Chapter 2. Back to the light. terrible dream. In the morning, my thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. Sir! Sir! Open up! What's going on, Bates? Open up, sir! I have to tell you something! Hold on, Bates. I'm there in a moment. What's the matter, then? It's horrible, sir. Henry, our gardener. They found him in the garden pond. Calm down, Bates. What are you talking about? They found him dead this morning in the pond. I know what I am saying. I saw his body being dragged out. How did it happen? I have no idea. Detective Collier will tell you that. He has been questioning everyone for quite some time now. And he wants to speak to you, too. He did not give any of us a chance to recover from the shock. Not even Madam. Where will I find him? He's waiting for you in the common room. We had better go there right away, sir. All right. Let's go. Detective Collier. Yes. Samuel Gordon, I presume. I need to speak with you. Mr. Gordon, do you know what happened? Yes. Bates told me everything. Good. I need to ask you a couple of questions. Shall we begin? Yes. Did you speak with Henry Stanton yesterday? Yes. I only arrived yesterday. 
but I spoke with him during the day. Oh, you arrived yesterday? Yes, to attend William's funeral. I understand. What did you speak with Stanton about? I don't know exactly. It was a very trivial conversation. Had you known him from before? No, I, I only knew Mr. Dickens, who was Henry's predecessor. That was before you left the manor? Yes, about twelve years ago. Okay, let's return to your conversation with Stanton yesterday. Did he seem strange to you? Nervous or disturbed? No, nothing like that. He behaved normally. So, you are saying that he seemed normal? Right. I spoke to Morris, your groom, before this interview. He told me that Stanton would often have a bit too much to drink. Yes, I have heard the same. Madame Victoria has also confirmed it. What do you make of it? Well, they found him in the garden pond, tangled up in algae. I don't know yet how he ended up in there, but the most likely explanation is that it was on account of his drunken state. He might have bumped into something, lost his balance, and fallen into the water. Maybe. But don't you think the water would have awakened him? No, exactly the opposite. It was water that caused his death. He fainted, fell into the pond, and the cold water did its thing. Stopped his heart? He wouldn't be the first drunkard to have drowned like this. What's ironic, however, is that it didn't happen in a lake or a river, but in a little bit of water in the back garden. Oh well, no man can choose his death. If there is nothing you need to ask, I won't be keeping you any longer. Thank you. I have all I need for now. Would you please see me out? Certainly. Follow me, detective. I will now wait for Dr. Herman's report and close this case. Thanks for your time, Gordon. You're welcome, detective. Goodbye. Collier wants to close the case. Hmm. Now that Henry is dead, I've got to find a way to obtain the second part of that strange object. And that's how we begin Chapter 2 with another death. It was just the gardener, and it seems like it was an accident. But it seems also we had a dream about that very thing happening. Are these visions telling us something? What is going on with the manor, with the whole Gordon family history? Well, we'll just delve deeper into all this in Chapter 2 of Let's Play the Black Mirror. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.